Okay, so let's see if you can figure out this simple math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read you the problem. It is the following. Bob wants an equal number of pennies, nickels, and dimes for his $2.40. How many of each coin will he have? Okay, so I don't want to give you any hints here because I want you to be creative and use whatever math skills you have and common sense to figure out this particular problem. And feel free to use a calculator. And if you have your answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. And then I want to talk about and show you what I believe is the most direct, efficient path to answer this question. Okay, but uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning mathematics as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so again, we have Bob. He has his $2.40. He wants an equal number of pennies, nickels, and dimes. How many of each coin will he have? Well, of course, it has to be the same number, right? Because he wants an equal number. And the correct answer is the following. It's 15. All right, now, if you got this right, irrespective of how you did this, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are an expert in solving basic math word problems. Now, they might uh, not be that impressed with that information, but you know what? Tell them anyways. It's certainly something to brag about. Now, how you can uh, solve this problem, that's a whole nother question. Now, this is a typical type of algebra word problem. And I did want to uh, say that initially because for those of you that might be rusty on your algebra or maybe you didn't, uh, you didn't even learn algebra, you know, through common sense and just trial and error, there's different ways to uh, find the solution to problems, okay? And, and I think that's something to keep in mind that if you face a math problem, just don't assume that you don't have the math skills or the knowledge to solve it, right? You should always try to figure out a problem. That is my best advice to you. But again, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the uh, best way, and that is to use algebra, because algebra is such uh, a powerful tool, and I'm gonna show you exactly how we can use basic algebra to solve this problem. Okay, so here is our problem again. Uh, we do have a algebra word problem or a math word problem. I like to use something called the rule of three, which means before you do anything, read the problem at least three times. I mean, we get really excited. We're like, oh, yes, I know what's going on. And then you start doing things because as you read the problem over and over again, okay, at least again, a minimum three uh, times, you're going to understand the question. Even though you might uh, initially see the question, you got to let it kind of sink in and then you got to kind of, you know, look at the data, look at the information in the question. And as you do that, you know, different ideas and thoughts and strategies will pop up in your brain. And of course, you want to pick the one that works the best. But the um, best way to kind of see the solution is to, to any math per problem or any problem at that is to try to model the problem or visualize it in some way. Okay, so we have uh, Bob here. He has this $2.40. He obviously has some pennies, nickels, and dimes, and he wants an equal amount of each. In other words, he wants five of these, five of these, and five of these, but the grand total has to add up to $2.40, right? $2.40. So how many uh, you know, does it need? Now, one thing that we could do here is just go through trial and error, right? This doesn't require any algebra. You could be like, all right, one dime, uh, one penny, one nickel, is that gonna add up to 240? No. So we start increasing the amount. Maybe we put 10 here, right? And see, oh, we're getting closer to 240. So again, this is why I wanted to say that uh, you could figure this problem out uh, in different ways, especially if you have a calculator. But we're gonna take a look at how to use algebra. And uh, we have to kind of notice here that the question involves an unknown value. How many, okay? Well, how many what? Well, we don't know. How many is uh, a good indication that we wanna use um, a variable, which means we're going to use algebra. Okay, so I'm gonna let X equal the number of coins. How many coins? Uh, and of course, this would 
represent uh, the same amount. But here is just a basic conceptual model. Now, a lot of you uh, can look at this problem uh, creatively in one way or see the problem, and that's perfectly fine. That's the great thing about math. You know, so don't um, uh, think that the way you're viewing the problem is incorrect. As long as you're accurate and you understand what's going on and it works for you, that's perfectly fine. But for me, I'm, I'm going to say to myself, okay, we're looking for the same amount of coins. Okay, it could be five coins, 10 coins. Of course, we know the answer is 15 coins. But whatever the, that amount of coins is, he's going to have an equal amount for pennies and he's going to have the same equal amount for nickels and we're going to have the same equal amount for dimes. So we're going to let X equal the number of coins okay, that uh, Bob wants so he can have this nice equal distribution for his um, $2.40. But here is the thing. okay, As soon as you start uh, involving a variable in mathematics, i.e. you are now using algebra, we can't solve for this variable unless we have an equation. okay? Uh, we need an equation to be able to solve uh, for a variable or variables. So we're going to have to now set up an equation. And the way we're going to do that is use the rest of the information in the problem. Okay. So just as a basic model, I'm going to say, okay, I have X amount of pennies, whatever this amount is. It's going to be the same amount of nickels and the same amount of dimes. Now, one kind of uh, tip here, and for those of you that might be taking a math course or just doing these problems, anytime you're dealing with a money word problem in mathematics, you need to express your coins okay, as decimals. So in other words, um, pennies are going to be 0.01, okay? a nickel will be 0 0.05, and dimes will be 0 0.10. If we had quarters, that would be 0 0.25, and of course a dollar will be uh, 1, right? So 1.10 is $1.10, for example. But uh, most people understand that because, you know, we're dealing with $2.40, but this is $2, and then 0 0.40 is 40 cents. All right, so uh, now at this point, okay, we're going to set up an equation. You can see here I have mine set up, but we need to understand why this is a good equation, okay? Well, let me go ahead and explain this right now. Okay, so if we have a certain amount of pennies, how much do we have uh, you know, in terms of value, how much money do we have with X amount of pennies? Well, we're going to take that 0 0.01, that one cent, and we're going to multiply it by how many pennies we have. Well, how much money do we have with nickels? Well, we're going to take that 0 0.05, that's the value of a nickel, and we're going to multiply it by how many nickels we have. Now, notice it's X. I have X pennies and X nickels because this is the same number of coins, right? So we're not using different numbers of coins. It's the same amount of coins. So how much money do we have with our dimes? Well, we're going to take that 0 0.10 and multiply it by X number of dimes. Now, this total value right here, okay, we know has to add up to $2.40 or 2.40. Okay, so at this point, really this comes down to a nice, lovely, basic algebra equation. And although there are decimals involved here, this is not that complicated. So this is uh, kind of the first phase of setting up a word problem, okay? Especially an algebra word problem, you got to set up a model, establish what a variable is equal to, and then uh, construct an equation. Now from this point forward, this really comes down to your ability to solve this equation and make sure we answer the question uh, correctly. So we're going to go ahead and take that next step now. But before we take that next step, I would like to take uh, this opportunity to ask you to take the step of subscribing to my channel. Now, I wouldn't ask, I wouldn't interrupt our lovely math uh, prom here if it wasn't that important. But it's important to me uh, for the reason of uh, I want to help other people. Okay, uh, My uh, passion is to stop uh, anyone considering giving up on math, okay? I've seen this over through the years. People have just, you know, over and over through the decades, actually, of people just uh, thinking, oh, I'm bad at math. I don't like math. You know, uh, that is doesn't have to be the case, okay? And what I try to do is teach math in a clear and understandable way and give people encouragement. At least that's what my goal is, okay? And hopefully I'm accomplishing that. But I can't reach more people unless that YouTube algorithm does uh, like, uh, like, hey, look, people, uh, you know, don't mind listening to this guy babble about mathematics. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that notification bell as well. Thanks so much. Now let's get back to the problem. 
Okay, so here is our equation, and uh, we need to understand what to do here. Okay, so basic algebra, we have x, x, and x. These are what we call uh, like terms, okay? So in other words, if I have 2x and I want to add it with 3x, I can add these numbers in front of the x's because these things here are like terms, so this is equal to 5x. Now, the reason why I can do that is because these x's are exactly the same variable, okay, i.e. like terms. By the way, if you're a little bit like, wow, then I need some review on basic algebra, let me give you a couple of suggestions. I'm going to leave links to my pre-algebra course, my algebra course, and my new course. It's called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. That's a fantastic course. Um, and it starts with arithmetic, goes through algebra, geometry, and even some basic probability and statistics. You'll find links to all these courses that teach you everything that we're doing here and much, much more. But uh, anyways, you need to recognize that we're dealing with like terms. Okay, we all have these x's here. Uh, just one more thing about like terms. If I had 2x plus 3x squared, I could not um, add these numbers. These We call these coefficients because these are not like terms. So don't let these decimals bother you here. The main idea is to recognize that we are indeed dealing with like terms, so I can add up these coefficients. So again, just get your calculator out if you're not comfortable working with decimals. We got 0.01 plus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.10. When we add up all those decimals, we get 0.16x. Okay, that's how many x's we have here. So 0.16x is equal to 240. And so now to solve for x, all we have to do is divide both sides of the equation by 0.16. So 240 divided by 0.16 is uh, 15. So x is equal to 15. So what is that? Well, remember, x up here, okay, was the number of coins. This is, this is what we we're looking for. But let's double check this. Let's make sure that this is a good answer. And we could just go back to our equation, okay? So if Bob said, hey, I want to equal a number of... Uh, pennies, nickels, and dimes for my $2.40. And we said, okay, yeah, just take 15 of each and you'll get your 240. Let's just double check that. Okay, so if we have 15, what we're going to do here is just basically plug in for these uh, X's uh, 15 because that is a fact the solution. But we're double checking this kind of conceptually as well. So if we have 15 pennies, again, we're going to have 15 times 0 0.01 or 15 cents. If we have 15 nickels, so that's going to be 15 times 0 0.05, we'll have 75 cents or 0.75. And if we have 15 uh, dimes, we're going to have a dollar 50. And if we add up uh, 15 cents, 75 cents, and a dollar 50, guess what? We get back to that 240. So 15 is a good solution. Okay, so hopefully, you know, this makes sense. And if you did this in a different manner, that's perfectly fine as well. But to at least, you know, um, even for those of you that just figured out, you know, uh, using uh, trial and error or another creative technique, that's fantastic. But, you know, I want you to know the algebra way as well, because algebra is tremendously powerful. And it is, you know, an, an outstanding, almost a, your kind of go to uh, tool when solving math problems. You know, algebra gets a, you know, especially algebra word problems, gets kind of a bad name. Oh, algebra, oh, it's just so, when am I ever gonna use this, yada, yada. Listen, I'm telling you right now, the more math you know, the better off you're going to be. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.